Uh, Detroit Diesel just came out with a, um, they did a much better job than the Scania. They got more horsepower, uh, they got lower fuel burn. Um, Detroit Diesel just came out with a big diesel engine. Diesel engines are very, very difficult to get horsepower out of them because they're already very efficient. So um, it's, uh, I think uh, Detroit Diesel is able to get a 16% reduction in fuel consumption, which is an extraordinary amount, and 50 horsepower in the engine. Is the, is the oh. rotary is the rotary engine the only one that the only type of engine? It's the only type of engine manufactured today that doesn't have exhaust valves. Right. Was okay. the question? Okay. Was it the 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 improvements available by using a turbo compound to extract some energy out of the exhaust? Uh -huh. Is that equally applicable to a normal four-stroke engine, or is that only? No. Well, the problem is, is as you know, as I pointed out, it's the exhaust valve problem. See. If you, if you try to put a turbo compound, first of all, diesel engines are easier on their exhaust valves because the combustion temperatures are lower, so mm -hmm. the valves are intrinsically more reliable. But um, on a regular aircraft engine, the exhaust valves run 15, 1,400, 15, 1,600, and they're that, that, that far away from safe, uh, failing. I don't know any of you guys so have doing airplanes. A doing a turbo compound. How many times have you had to report sodium fill valves, a lot of aircraft? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but do, do so do you mean what, what I didn't get? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry, what I didn't get from the slide uh -huh. was what, what you said there was an exhaust valve loss that was 500 horsepower yes. or something. Yes. What is is that made worse or better by the turbo using a turbo compound? It's made worse because it puts a little back pressure on the okay. uh, engine. Yeah. So, so it, it doesn't it affect the horsepower much, but it's it, exhaust it valve catch out. Yes, yeah, so exhaust valve catch out. Okay, back here. Yeah, question goes to the back pressure you just mentioned. Yeah. You showed a huge amount of waste energy going out in the exhaust. Right. And then you're showing they're going to recapture some right. of that. Yeah. But the one thing I guess is when I do that, I create back pressure. I take some of the original horsepower yeah. away from the engine. Right, some. So a very small amount. Yeah. Well, back pressure is a biggie when you start. Well, you know, that, that's the reason they use turbochargers <coughs> instead of superchargers. Right. Because there's it's less effect. A supercharger gets all of its horsepower out of the crankshaft. Right. I mean, if you've got a supercharged engine that's 300 horsepower, it's generating 400 horsepower. Well, no, no, the other 100 horsepower is going in. I couldn't just claim the delta by itself. There's another delta goes Oh, up. absolutely. I, this is a first order uh, approximation. This is not, uh, okay, you know. That. That goes into the equation. Yeah, NASA did a study on turbo compound rotaries about 1981, and they got um, 80 horsepower out of a two rotor, uh, a 200 horsepower two rotor. That's a 40 percent improvement in fuel consumption. So uh, yes, uh, the back pressure does have an effect, no question about it. Okay, Murray, did you have a question? Okay. Are you advocating this call for airplanes or for all? Airplanes or and or listen, gasoline, man. Three fifty a gallon. It was yeah. going to be six dollars a gallon next week. You know. So it gives you more horsepower for the same fuel burn. Exactly. You, you make the engine more mileage. You can make the engine smaller to get the same horsepower. Okay. okay. So you use turbo compound. It make up the difference. You get power. Okay. See. One thing I never could figure out is why those guys that uh, um, mainscaping, but they were doing uh, rotary engines, power sports. Why they got so much trouble with their reduction drives, and I keep hearing, I've had other people tell me they got problems with torsional vibration, yeah. and I can't figure out why. Okay, yeah. that's getting off the subject here, but, because um, I t have a talk on PSR use, but um, uh, you're right, I mean, uh, uh, explosives. Um, I'm thinking you've got fixed blades in this turbine. Mm -hmm. It's going to work best at a certain range. Well, that's I, I did mention, uh, but in the YouTube video, I mentioned that we use a variable nozzle. Uh, Porsche uh, late model, all late model Porsche turbos have variable nozzles. They have mains on the turbocharger, and that is to, to boost the turbocharger speed at low low RPMs. So by using a nozzle, it, it puts a little more back pressure on the engine. No, no question about it. But you speed up the air coming out of the exhaust and squirting at the turbine, you actually get a net increase in horsepower at that RPM. So if you use a variable nozzle, and uh, uh, a lot of the turbocharger manufacturers now are getting into that, um, then you can overcome that problem. Instead of having a point design situation, you can broaden the, the horsepower and the torque curve. Okay, any other questions? Okay. When, when they claimed that uh, they had torsional vibration problems, they were pointing at the crankshaft, the eccentric shaft. 
And when you look at the eccentric shaft of the rotary, yeah. the natural frequency of that has got to be so high. It's oh, it is high. And not only that, it's smoother than a piston engine. So a piston engine, a four-cylinder piston engine, the torque, uh, the, t the torque value actually goes negative. Uh, it's a, a four-cylinder fires twice per revolution, and twice per revolution the torque goes negative on a four-cylinder, right? And it's much worse on a diesel. In fact, some diesel aircraft engines, the first thing they did, they uh, Renault built some diesel engines, they put them in a 182 or something. The first thing they did was destroy the propeller because it was trying to do this, you know? It was trying to do this on the round. And the torque peak was very severe. The rotary is much smoother, but it's still there. There's still a, a torque pulse. Where well, they may have had problems you mentioned on a dyno. Yeah. Coupling an engine to a dyno can be very rough because the rotor on the dyno has pretty high inertia. Yeah. Well, it's the, it's the, the kind of dyno he was using. Yeah. It was the kind of dyno he was using. Mazatrix bolts the 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 uh, engine directly to the uh, uh, water pump. Close coupling. Yeah, it's very short. And so nobody had any problems with those. Question way in the back. Uh, yes. Uh, I don't entirely understand everything you're talking about. With the, but these are all the efficiencies of the engine and yeah. all of that physics. And so on. I know one thing about the rotary engine. It almost had a terrible amount of oil consumption. Well, that was in the past. Current, uh, rotor, current rotary engines use a, uh, a computerized oil injection <coughs> pump. And it now, my RX-8, I have an RX-8, it, it uh, burns about one quart in 3,000 miles, which is about the oil change interval. Yeah. So I don't even bother to check the oil anymore. I just, uh, you know, I just okay. change the oil and then maybe a quart down when I change the oil, but no big deal. So that, that uh, went away. When, uh, by the way, uh, let me point out something about that. If that were true, the engine would never pass EPA in California smog rules. If it was burning excessive oil, the hydrocarbon content would be out of sight. So it's meeting uh, California and, uh, and EPA smog rules as far as oil consumption is concerned. Okay. A, a, standard, okay. a standard rotary, don't people say they get worse mileage? Yeah, uh, people say they get worse mileage, and uh, it's usually at the low horse, lower horsepower levels. Up at the aircraft engine levels, uh, we're getting about 5% less than the Lycoming. And uh, one of the things about the rotary, it'll run 150 degrees lean at peak. I don't know, how many of you guys lean your engine when you fly? Uh, <laughs> usually they go 50 degrees lean at peak and it starts to stumble and stuff. The rotary will run smoothly at 150 degrees lean at peak, and that is because the combustion chamber is actually rotating. It's throwing the rich mixture out towards the spark plugs. So you can lean that sucker down until it stops and it runs smooth. It stops around 200 degrees lean at peak, but the horsepower drops up. You need a brake, Paul? No, I just wanted to ask how many airplanes are flying with rotary engines right now? Oh, dozens. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe worldwide, maybe 100 or something. Okay, next question. This gentleman. Are, are, you, uh, are you just advocating this concept or are you into the hardware? It's a hobby. Okay. I've owned rotary engines since 1972. Ooh. I bought a brand new RX-2 and I've owned seven rotary powered cars. Mm -hmm. I'm also a pilot. And uh, I do this as a hobby. I, okay. You know, I'm selling books, I'm not getting rich out of selling books. <laughs> I just wondered if you got into the uh, turbine side of the hardware. No, I haven't. Okay. No, I haven't. Not yet. Uh, although I do know there's a company in, in Colorado that will help you. They make all sizes, uh, sizes and types of turbines. I think it's called uh, Barber Nichols or something like that. Have you heard of them? Yes. Yeah, they do uh, <laughs> turbine designs. Yeah, they're probably the premier. I'm in competition with them. Right. Oh, you're in competition with them? Well, <laughs> I work at Rocketdyne. Oh, you work for Rocketdyne. Yeah. In fact, a division of Rocketdyne, Pratt & Whitney Canada, I think they're all in the same, uh, they're all in the same on, uh, corporate entity, uh, applied for a patent on a, on a turbo compound rotary about four years ago. But uh, I talked to the inventor and he was totally unaware of the, uh, the exhaust valve problem. Uh, so he, the, the patent covers both piston turbo compound and rotary turbo. And he was rather surprised that there was you know, so much weight teeth in the thought cells. So, so Curtis Wright originally started it.